Hi there. Yes, it's me again. And it's diet, health and fitness for the final time. But we're fine because Christmas is coming. Yay! Yay! (laughs) So Ben Cold is still here and Kim Patel has joined us. Say hello. 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 Kim Patel, scout leader. What's your title with all your stuff you've brought (laughs) with you? She's brought a picnic. Yes. Be prepared is my motto. I have a 10 pence piece and a piece of string in my bag always. (laughs) Piece of string for what purpose? I've no idea. idea. Keep your socks up. But we had to have it. (laughs) And they would check. I had a little, well, my parents used to smoke. So my dad used to smoke tobacco. So I used to have a back in and I had my 10p in there, a bit of string, <laughs> pencil and a bit of paper. Sorted. <laughs> <laughs> 10p so you could phone home? Yes, in case of an emergency. Yeah? Yeah. I remember, I can't I can't put a use to the piece of string at the moment. You no. You might need to tie something up, tourniquet, I would, uh, yeah. you know, anything. That'd Hold a, a tent wicked up. wicked tourniquet. <laughs> It'd be great, wouldn't it? Well, you'd be alive. You know, that's well, just, yeah, <laughs> ish, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Ben, welcome back to uh, Thank this you. show. Thanks for staying. I'm looking forward to all the snacks and treats that Kim's brought in. This yeah, is, you know, so this is a celebration final show yeah. for sure. Um, but very healthy celebration, Kim. Of course. Well, Lots I have to fruit. say, I, I went, like it. I went round Sainsbury's. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. I, went, I went round the supermarket. Oh, the superstores are available. They are. And uh, <laughs> and I was with my little trolley. I was thinking, would Denise approve of this? Would Ben approve <laughs> I brought of this? the chocolate in. <laughs> <laughs> So I avoided cream cakes. Did you? (laughs) Yeah, I don't tend to eat those. Uh, Don't even come into my field of vision. I don't see them anymore when I'm going around the supermarket. That's quite interesting. Really? Yeah. Because they have neon lights and flash and speak to me. Big arrows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Eat me. Yeah. (laughs) And yet a mince pie or a chocolate brownie with a big dollop of clotted cream on the top. Oh, yeah. You know, homemade, of course. Chocolate brownie, yeah. Yeah, 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 I could go for that any day of the week. I have pro- possibly one mince pie a season. That would be me done. And we don't do Christmas cake. Don't I've stopped doing it because it goes in the bin. Or Christmas pudding. Uh, well, I'm the only one that eats all of that. Yeah. Yeah, so I never buy them unless I specifically want to eat six mince pies. Or <laughs> exactly. <a cake. laughs> uh, once I, uh, last year, like I whittled it down to four gluten-free mince pies and three of them went in the bin. There's only one got eaten. No one in the house likes them. Aww. We're a big cheese board people. We put those out, lots of fruit and grapes and stuff like that. So the family like that. I eat the grapes, they eat the cheese. And uh, I do a lot of chocolate stuff. Bye, Lorraine. Lorraine Salisbury leaving the building. She will be back with you next week. She's got a big Christmas show on Tuesday the 20th, I think the date is. So do stay tuned for her next week. Well, how are you? You're still a bit croaky, Kim. Yeah. Croaky I am Kim. A bit <laughs> croaky Kim. <laughs> Yes. Not quite sure where that's going, but yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're, you're way better than you were last week. Oh, tons better. And I'm tons better than I was a few days before last week. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I believe I've got quite a robust immune system from all those years of working in intensive care and suctioning and being sprayed <laughs> with sputum and all sorts of things. body fluids yeah lovely yeah. best image ever in yeah. my head that was then. <laughs> oh well if you, if you like images about sputum let me tell you about when i worked on a respiratory ward <laughs> later later, later yes you know, have a little talk later together take all the food out and the drink and sit at a table and have a nice chat together yes <laughs> cool. OK, let's have a show, shall we? <laughs> so I, I came to me uh, either yesterday or the day before, I can't remember when I sent you the message, that um, if each of us chose two things from this last year um, of being on the radio, what would we choose? You know, things that had influenced us in some way. So, Ben, have you got two things? I've got two things. And uh, the first one, Denise, is you. Oh, because I was not expecting that. Thank no, you very much. No, I know. <laughs> and, and it's great. There's no creeping, but Denise is blushing now. There's a red bag in the corner that she could hide next to you quite nicely right now. And 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 it's you because oh, thank you. Uh, you brought uh, first of all, you know, all the the time I've spent here with you yeah. and uh, and just becoming comfortable being in this space and getting to talk so much about the things that we love, uh, but also for bringing access bars into my life and uh, for introducing introducing me to access and and giving me connection into that and it's uh it, it is it, it's the beginning of a of a transition that's that's showing some serious acceleration in in both personal and professional life and mm. uh, and so you are the first thing that came to mind Why, that, thank you. that this year has brought <laughs> and and made a really big difference for me so uh 
uh, so first of all, and especially as this is the last uh, Diet Health and Fitness, and uh, um, you know, this is the show that I've come on uh, the most, which has been really good, and, and so I'm ever so grateful to you. For and that. you're setting up your own little channel with these shows, aren't you? So people can actually go and listen to them again. Yep. Yeah, so they can they can actually just all of the shows that that I've been on here on Callan FM you can find uh, in my blog. Uh, so that's bencolder.co.uk uh, in the blog section, uh, and also you'll find them on my YouTube channel, which is Integral Patterning. So you can uh, and you can access either one of those. And if you go to the blog, it will take you to the YouTube page anyway. Yeah. So uh, and there's some of those on SoundCloud as well. So you can also find them on the the Ben Calder SoundCloud uh, channel. But because uh, there was a bit of a, a maximum storage capacity there, <laughs> yeah. uh, they're all slow getting shifted over onto onto the youtube channel because they'll let me do it for free yeah because youtube's kind thank you youtube <laughs> and other and other platforms there's lots of them available <laughs> blah 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 and um, before i forget what i'm supposed to say um yeah so and also the photographs that have been taken here as well so folks will be able to recognize you and find out more about me from that my beautiful smiley face you've captured me wonderfully thank you i particularly like the one i took last week that yeah. i put up on um through instagram to facebook and twitter um today so it just had you in that moment and you look fab Thank you. Yeah, so you're welcome. Kim, have you got one before we ask Ben for his second? Ooh, <laughs> I found it really difficult because there's been so many interesting things for me. I think possibly one of the things would be the exposure to people that work in different areas, mm. which I wouldn't have had before. So I, I come from a science background as a, as a nurse and, you know, doing research now. And um, it's been wonderful for me to be to meet people that have different perspectives, different philosophies on living and their therapy. So um, it's broadened my perspective hugely. And I haven't been at all sceptical about any of it, which is, you know, from a science point of view, you know, where's the evidence? Mm. I want the proof. And actually that hasn't come into it. They've kind of felt like truths. Mm. So there's something very quite deep within me that sort of resonated with the people that I've met through being here and uh, the stories and things that I've heard. Yeah, beautifully said. Thank you. Thank that you. is, yeah, sort of encapsulates a lot of, of the sort of thing that happens for me as well. And I have to say that one of the things I often say is that having this radio show, uh, Empowerment Hour, and this one has been one of the best forms of networking I've mm. ever done. Uh, and as someone who likes the one-to-one with, with someone rather than the massive group, it's perfect. So if you think that you're a little bit um, you know, quiet and shy, which I used to call myself, um, the radio really helps to broaden things you know just having that chat with someone mm. playing the music you like that they like it just sets up this great atmosphere for everyone to have a, to have fun yeah and enjoy themselves and to find things out from other people as well so much information other people have that you don't have and i scribble stuff down i must get that book must look that up must do this you know don't do half of it i don't have time but uh yeah so it's really cool so i would like to say thank you to both of you because as a contribution to the show that you've been the readiness with which you've shown up, you know, and there's never been a, a falter from either of you in terms of what we're going to talk about, even if we're not sure. We've brought the show together every single time and it's just been fabulous. So thank you for that. And while we're on thank yous, I'd like to thank everybody who chose to be here throughout the year. So you chose some of the guests, Kim. Mm -hmm. You and Kirsty when I was on holiday doing the show, <laughs> you know. Mm. We haven't been asked to do that again, have we? <laughs> I've not been on holiday DJ since, have well. I? <laughs> Sorry? I understand about the DJ names now as well. Oh, you get it Yeah, now. sure. I didn't quite get that at first. But, yeah, uh, we can't explain one of the DJ names on air, but um, you and Kirsty had DJ names, and uh, I had one behind the scenes, which we can't broadcast. Um, <laughs> Because there's a swear word in it. Um, <laughs> Not that you'd um, imagine that from Denise at all. <laughs> People are surprised when I swear. I Always. <laughs> I think, why? I'm a girl from Manchester, you know. It's just it's what yeah. we do. Um, <laughs> no, I'm no saint, that's for sure. Um, what else is going to say? So we've had some lovely people on the show. Ben, you've been with us. Uh, we've had Darren Campbell-Jones. Um, I had a list in my head. It's gone now. Nikki. So we had Kirsty Percival, Nikki Miller and many, many, many mm. more. And we are 
so grateful for, to each and every one of you for the contribution that you've been to this show, to the listeners and to this radio station. And I'm so glad that you so readily come in, given us your interesting point of view on whatever subject it's been that we've been discussing. So, yeah, big whoop to everybody that <laughs> took part. Yeah. And um, Lorraine's going to do a great job. Her show is going to be on from uh, January 12th uh, in this hour and it's going to be called Happy Talk. So I'm sure we're all going to be guests on that show. <laughs> we're just going to be turning up regardless because it's what we're used to doing, <laughs> whether she wants us or not. Absolutely. <laughs> With our happy news stories. It's Christmas for us in the studio. There's no tinsel, though. Where's the tinsel? And no Christmas jumpers. No Christmas jumpers. Is it Christmas jumper Friday Day, yep. tomorrow? Yep. Oh, okay. I'll have to I've fish never mine owned out. a Christmas jumper, I'll be honest. I've only got a rude one. Have you? Yeah. No, I haven't even got a rude one. I've bought one this year for the first time. <laughs> it's got, obviously, it's got little dogs on it, wearing little Christmas coats. Oh. Yeah, so we're going to wear it this year for the first time. There you go, go, Denise. That's your mission for the afternoon, is to go, go and find, find yourself a Christmas mm, jumper. Maybe not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not really bothered, I'll be honest. Um, I love Christmas. I, I actually love doing Christmas. I enjoy all the people coming round. I love the food. I love creating the food uh, and setting the scene in the house. So I don't know if I've told you, but <laughs> I've got, because um, we're not getting the Christmas tree until Sunday, just the way things have panned out. I've put a Sylvanian family's house up oh, yes. in the lounge and I've got a little Sylvanian family Christmas tree and a little rabbit in a red outfit. And I put what was um, wool that looks like tinsel around the Christmas tree. <laughs> and I've got tinsel that I've stuck that isn't tinsel, it's wool that I've stuck to the outside of the house and put bits of cotton wool, nice stuff all over it. So it looks like it's snowing. Wow. I have great fun. <laughs> <laughs> and there's lights on the inside. And um, next week when I'm doing my admin, she says, doing <laughs> the finger thing for those comma things um i'll be playing with the sylvanian house and sending them off to do things and <laughs> the relatives are coming to stay and things like that because <laughs> i like that so have you got any other decorations up uh no not yet no so it'll we'll do all, it all on sunday. sunday yeah yeah so there's a load of evie's friends uh, from the theater coming over i'm making them a big curry and we're watching disney films and they're helping me do the tree Eggnog. Lovely. Love it. They they don't they're dra- driving so they won't be drinking and they they don't actually like to drink during a season mm-hmm. because they know how it affects their health mm. so they save it all up. <laughs> yeah, do Very it later. Responsible of them, sort of. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. this is their job. It's be yeah. like if we went on duty as nurses, yeah. you know, drunk and hungover. It's you just can't do your job. It's not safe. No. And um, the theatres are places, certainly backstage, that an awful lot can go wrong. Yeah. Mm. And so they, they look after themselves and um, take their, yeah, their, their jobs, their roles very responsibly. Mm. Mm. And good for them um, in their early 20s and already like that. I think it took me a lot longer <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yep. laughs> to, <laughs> to get that responsible. But there you go. Um, OK, so let's have a, a little chat about... One other thing that's made a a difference for you this year. So if we do it on a health basis. So, Ben, you've got one thing that you love to do. I I love it. I love it. It's it's my Qigong. Uh, So I've been really lucky this year in that I've had my brother visit with me twice this year. And uh, and every time he comes, it's, it's always kind of an upgrade in practice because we you know we can't just do things normally you know we don't get home at the end of the day and, and watch tv uh he's like let's try this technique show me this you know mm. and and so there's this constant exchange of practice and so we always always uh kind of increase our practice levels during those times and so i've had two uh, two periods of five weeks with him this year uh and so we've really kind of upped the practice uh, this year has been the first year that I've had the full five element uh, workshops in for the seasons. So every at the start of the shift of every season, mm. there's been a Qigong day specifically uh, for practice and helping each of those organs within the body and really enhancing stuff. And, uh, and, and those really make a big difference. I mean, we only did the winter one weekend before last and, and it was fantastic just... Uh, taking all that energy for the water element and the winter and just clearing stuff through mm. and I, I just feel it in my body I'm more and more robust and more and more healthy and you know when I'm watching everybody at this time of year kind of 
starting almost to deteriorate as they mm. head towards the Christmas break because the the pressure of the season and, it's and the stress is that building. That's the expectation, yeah, isn't it? Sure. That, that has got to happen to you. Yeah. Mm. Whereas I'm revving up. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if, if anything, the fact that I know that uh, um, you know a week today is my last working day, and and I, you know I'm gearing up, I'm revving up because then the free time means that we're we're out and we're doing stuff, and mm. you know, so I'm really really looking forward to that. So I just use the practice to uh, give me that platform for making sure that the body's flowing and feeling great. Mm. I think f- when I think about you, Kim, I think about everything you do with your dogs <laughs> and, you know, the fun you have and, yeah. and they're not so much fun at times as well. You know, when they go running off and you're chasing them. And <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's hilarious. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm us. glad it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my little one's not very good. She runs She runs out of the ring and joins the nearest family that she can get to. <laughs> uh, but yeah, my big boy, he's five, well, grade five. He's age seven, um, so we've got a, a full year ahead of agility. We're training throughout the winter. Mm. Um, I'm doing new things with him all the time. He's so clever. My little one is clever, but she chooses not to use it. <laughs> she's a princess. Uh, so it's a little bit frustrating, really, because she's got so much potential. I know mm. what she's capable of, but she chooses not to do it. Uh, but my friend's got a little puppy in Airedale, so I have a cunning plan. Uh. <laughs> this little Airedale's going to follow through. We've talked about it. So uh, when he's old enough, I'm going to start training him up to do agility, which will be amazing. Aren't Airedales quite willful? Oh, Are yes. they good to train? Uh, well, I've never seen an Airedale do agility. Mm. But then I've got crossbreeds, and my crossbreeds had never done there weren't any others like them that had done right. agility first. So, you know, I'm pushing the boundaries. Do it. Yeah. 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 My neighbours across the road had one. He was called Spencer. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> what, what a willful dog. Yeah. In well, the he, whole nine yeah. years they had him, they, yeah, he ruled them. Well, Hugo is quite stubborn and willful. So I think that I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be, you know, man enough, as it were, to manage this little puppy. Uh, but already, if you pick him up and move him, and he doesn't want to be moved, he'll growl. Mm. So you know, it's you gotta you gotta be alpha male from day one mm. with an Airedale. They're they're the king of terriers, aren't they? Mm. Airedales. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So I'm I'm. Well, they think they are it. as well. Well, they do. Yes. So I've got to uh, train my friend to train her dog. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that. I can train him in agility. Yeah. So it's all new for her because she's never had a puppy before either. What a one! What a puppy to start on. <laughs> yeah. Such a willful animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure there's an awful lot of psychology we could go into on that subject, but uh, let's leave that for today. Um, anything else for you this year, Kim? Anything that's well, been happening for you? I've been um, practicing mindfulness meditation for seven years. And what's been, so if we're talking specifically about this last year, what's been really good for me has been um, the meditation group mm. that I do. And it's grown from only having two people. You know, I've, I've got a steady core of people that come every month now. And, it, and, it's, and it's growing, which mm. is wonderful. So I've got people that have meditated for 20 odd years. I've got people that have never done it before. And uh, we, we have a lot of fun. I do mindful movements. I do a bit of Qigong as well a bit of tai chi and some yoga type things um so yeah it just sort of mixes it up a bit i don't think people quite appreciate that that you can meditate whilst doing stuff yeah <laughs> you know it doesn't have to be you know key gone it could be making a cup of tea so um yeah it, it, it's that present being in the yeah, moment yeah. yeah that's been really lovely for me is you know r- connecting with other people yeah Cool. It's that old classic Zen statement, isn't it? That before enlightenment, I chopped wood and carried water. And after enlightenment, I chopped wood, wood and carried carry water. <laughs> yes! You know, yes! So that no matter what it is that you're doing, it's all done with that kind of presence and, yeah. uh, and dissolving to anything but the present moment. Yeah, doing, yeah. not doing, as mm. they say in Taoism. Yeah. 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 Way, I think, way, way. yeah, and for me, while yeah. we're on the subject of the sort of more uh, therapeutic things, it would be a, the access consciousness. Having been to so many courses this year, um, that my energy around my clients has really changed mm. and um, Access Bars started it off for me, changed me. I just had to 
be like the ambassador for the area and get it out there. Mm. And I'm just so delighted to say that I'm heading up towards having trained nearly 100 people mm. now wow. in the last 18 months. And it's just like, oh, I'm so grateful, one, to access consciousness, and two, to everybody that gets it and wants mm. more of it and you know wants the wants it as a therapy as a treatment and as a practitioner and then um slowly people are actually wanting to teach it themselves so ben mm. you're going to go on and teach it aren't you at your am, center yeah. Yeah. and it's so there's something so i'm going to use the word rewarding i don't think that's the right word but for me the end of a, a day where I start, because if I'm going somewhere, I might be packing the car up or whatever. So, for instance, a couple of weeks ago, I was I was on Anglesey. So I was leaving home at eight in the morning to get there, to get set up, to welcome everyone home at half eight at night. Long day, in mm. theory. I loved it. Yeah. It didn't feel like a long day, you know. I got yeah. home, I fed myself, I watched a bit of telly, did some knitting, and I still didn't need to go to bed. Mm. And there's just something so revitalizing about it the whole thing and yes I didn't get my bars run because I'm teaching it but there's something about the energy and watching mm. other people and the relaxation that their bodies get from just lying down on a Saturday mm. afternoon when they wouldn't normally do that mm. and they get their heads touched in a certain way that they just know they've let go of something and they don't need to know what it is they don't need to know in words what it is they just know and it's just marvellous. It mm. <laughs> God, what else can I say about it? Uh, yeah, I love it. More of that, please. So I'm going on. Uh, I will be a fully qualified, certified facilitator by the end of March. Wow. <gasps> so exciting. So it's, I'll be in Rome for that. Ooh, even yeah. more exciting. <laughs> what a place <laughs> to get it, yeah. I know. Yeah, uh, and that's because they, they do the certified facility training three times a year. So they do it in Europe uh, and it's in Rome next year. They will do it in America and they will do it somewhere over Asia way. So mm. usually Australia, they like Noosa in particular, so often over that way. And then who knows where I'm going mm. from there. I don't yet. I just, that's my target for, you know, for the moment and we'll so go from there. Will you be there. tying it in with a holiday whilst you're in Rome? Um, maybe not because it, it we, actually will be a whole week by the time I've travelled and come back it's five days of course right. so travelling one uh, either end it is a whole week so there's quite a long time to be away from a business mm. uh, whilst changing that business at the same time so no I doubt it and not in March anyway because it hasn't quite warmed up the, over there yet so no. <laughs> hopefully enough. i will get to see some of rome but the days the training days will be quite long mm. uh, so we shall see we shall see Lovely. So, so we're looking forward to uh next year i'm about to lose my headphones no they're on my head there we go um and what we're all going to be doing so um what are we going to be doing ben next year 2017 bring it on well, um, do you know what i'm gonna travel um uh, i've got some some stuff to go away because for me, one of the one of the best things in life is experience. Mm. So one of the things that enriches my life and makes me feel as good as I can be is getting away and traveling. And uh, there's a couple of things I'm doing. Uh, um, in January, I'm off away uh, on a secret uh, uh, long weekend break somewhere. This is my my Christmas gift uh, from my partner, and I have no idea where I'm going yet. How exciting! Some, somewhere. Do you know uh, which currency you need? Would that give a clue? It would give a clue. <laughs> I, I will find out on Christmas Day, but as of yet, okay. I don't know. Uh, and then in February, I'm taking my partner away somewhere secretly, and I know that she's potentially listening. Listening to this okay, show, so, so uh, I'm not going to drop any hints <laughs> about what currency she might need. Uh, and then in March, we've got a, a trip planned uh, to go to Spain, so we can go climbing. Because um, uh, thankfully, uh, we've got uh, people over there that we can go and stay with. So we're going to go and spend a week uh, in Costa Blanca climbing, which will be uh, absolutely amazing. Because mm. uh, there's nothing like the limestone out there. You can do climbing that you can't even imagine. Uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward, actually to making sure that it's the time out of work plus i've got more uh, festivals and events that we're uh, planning to attend with the center and, and with my own practice and i just love being out in some of these beautiful country spaces mm -hmm. and the eden festivals one that i've been doing for years up in dumfries and it's in this amazing parkland mm -hmm. loads of really old oak trees beautiful hills lovely river that every every evening uh, after i finish work i go and find the secret sauna i have a sauna and then i jump in the river and <laughs> uh, and you know and it just washes the whole day 
stay away and then I can go and dance all night. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to having those experiences. Sounds cool. Mm. Kim. Oh, well. You're off to yeah. see people. Uh, yes, I am. Um, so in May, I am hoping to see Bob Dylan. He's coming to Liverpool. I am also going to Berlin to see Aerosmith which will be quite exciting. Um, I've got agility stuff going on. But the probably, personally, professionally, the biggest thing for me next year is going to be tackling the NHS ethical procedures <laughs> <laughs> for my research study. We wish you all the very best oh, with that. I've sort of blocked out a year to jump through wow. all the hoops. Yeah, wow. yeah, it's it's really, really tough. Yeah. So there's two different layers to it. So I've got the university ethical board that I need to get through first and then there's two layers within the NHS right. that I need to get through so do you know, if um, there's one thing I've learned about you over this year is how tenacious you are and I just hmm. think that that <laughs> you are going to do it I'd give it I wouldn't even go there I just wouldn't <laughs> yeah, do it sure. overwhelmed you know just yeah. it's it. just like <laughs> no that's not for me <laughs> I, yeah I know but I just I get do. how you could do it I really do it's um you say tenacious I say Bloody minded. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> Tenacious is the loving word for it. <laughs> it gets me into lots of trouble, my tenacity, <laughs> and it also gets me out of trouble. Yeah. So I'm thankful for it. Yes, I'm sure I could do. Oh, I see it as a positive. Yeah. yeah. I really do. I think the potential for my research is huge. So I think that it's the right thing to do and it is going to be really hard to get through the NHS ethics. But I think it's so important to give people chronic pain a voice. Mm. And I'm hoping that from the research that I do, which is looking at how our self-concept changes over time with chronic pain, that um, I'll be able to come up with some sort of training for counsellors and people that work with people with chronic pain because people don't know they don't know what it's like. Mm. And, um, you know, as a counsellor, I know what I'm doing with someone with depression. I know what I'm doing with anxiety. I know what I'm doing with bereavement. I know what I'm doing with pain because I have pain and I've had a background working in pain management. But there are lots of people out there that don't understand what chronic pain is at a physiological level, let alone a psychological yeah. level. So I'm hoping that I will use this research to get a voice out there mm. maybe change policy I don't mm. know that's a big ambition isn't it I reckon you can do it no problem that's amazing actually yeah um someone I was talking to the other day said that um in numerology terms so if anyone follows numerology apologies if this isn't exactly right but I think it went something like this that this when you add up numbers so 2016 adds up to nine six 2016 adds up to nine yeah. and that's the ending of things so when you add up 2017 you get 10 but you add you take the north off it goes back to one so 2017 is new beginnings Ooh. so you, we're starting again on that journey uh, which I find quite fascinating because I do feel like that I do mm. feel like I've been doing so much stuff to get me to this point and it's like okay what don't I want now and I, I'm just so ready to let mm. stuff go and it's just so easy. You it, know, it's really like, interesting. There's a simplicity to it this year. Because I've, I've written you and Tracy thank you cards. And actually, the, the spirit of those thank you cards is saying it doesn't feel like an ending. Yeah. It feels like there's something new that's happening. So, yeah, maybe there's that sort of energy that's going around. Yeah, which is what I'm, I'm sensing. Mm. It, and it's, that's how it's working for me. And then when somebody said that, I thought, yeah, I like that. Yeah. That works for me as well. So picking up on different energies as they're creating themselves and going yeah I get that energy I'm following that one thank you I'll Absolutely. have that yeah. for me um end of January uh, I'm just delighted that Pablo Spall Ben you know Pablo yes. is coming to Chester to do the first I think I don't think there's ever been another one and nobody's telling me there has uh, the first um, actual cacao ceremony mm. so I don't quite know what to expect but I like the guy <laughs> I've only met him once um, <laughs> you're going to have a great I time I love his chocolate it, it will be a fantastic evening and, and I'm actually just gutted that that's the weekend that I'm away on my mystery trip uh, but I I'm going to strongly encourage you to have more so that I can come and attend those and, cool. and enjoy those as well. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it uh, and hoping to get to one, which I think will be in Shrewsbury in January. Mm -hmm. Can't make this, this one this Friday, which I can't make, but he's got one before mine in Shrewsbury on the 12th, I think it is, 
if that's a Thursday, then he's doing it then. So looking forward to going and finding out what he does, how he does it, what he does it with, and mm. all of that sort of thing. And it was interesting that at the beginning of this year, I was asking, how can I take my love of chocolate and create something with it? And I knew I didn't want to make chocolate. I knew yeah. there was something about it that I'm not meant to actually be the processor of the chocolate making. But do you know what? I've done, I think, three talks using chocolate as an analogy for other things in life this year. And they've gone down really well. And I've got one booked in for next year. And then I've got this cacao ceremony. It's like, well, how does chocolate get any better than that? It's just fabulous. It doesn't. (laughs) (laughs) Pablo's chocolate is heaven in a Yeah, if you want to look up um, Pablo Spall, his company's called Forever Cacao. And he's just such a lovely guy. Really super guy. So we are in the last few moments now of the last diet, health and fitness show. (sighs) But we're fine, aren't we? Yeah, always (laughs) will be. Christmas is coming. Of course we're fine. So, Ben, you had an idea in that song. What shall we What shall we just finish this show off with? Just something for all of you to go out and do next year to stay healthy. And I'm going to drop it straight in there because you know I love it. <laughs> practice some Qigong. Yeah. But actually, it doesn't matter what you practice, but just do something every day for your health. A little bit of stretching, a little bit of movement, a little bit of breathing. Do something. A little bit of breathing. Just a, a little, little bit. A little bit of breathing. A little bit of breathing. <laughs> you know, the I would more say a lot. you can do, the better. But yeah. do something physical. Help your body move. Cool. Kim, what about you? Well, I'm going to say meditate and walk. Um, and if you don't have a dog to walk yourself, borrow someone else's. <laughs> yeah, or go to a dog charity. Do and, some dog uh, sitting do or some dog something walking. like Absolutely. that. Absolutely, yeah. because getting outside is just so good for your mental health as well as your physical health. Yeah. Actually, there's been some research that has looked at um, the process of just walking. It doesn't have to be outside or anywhere pretty in particular, but just walking yeah. actually reduces all those um, feel-good stuff. Yeah, it does, because you see something that's greater than you Mm. and it just takes you out of your head is my interpretation of what happens to me. Mm. And so I love that. So I could do a million and one things to this. So um, I'm going to do, I think, three things here. So No, that's not fair. (laughs) You said we only had one. Um, Shut up. I can shut you down. (laughs) (laughs) Who's in charge of the desk? (laughs) You've only got time for two now, didn't you? Yeah, I know. So um, (laughs) drink more water. Drink plenty of water. Um, Get your bars run and practice gratitude every single day for everything no matter how good bad or otherwise in between it is just be grateful that it's come your way and shown you something that you I can change or keep the same it's all about a choice absolutely cool so thank you too so much Kim thank you for everything you brought into the studio it's fabulous I can see Tracy's ready outside um, to come in for talking business and um, I will be back on January the 12th for the um, first empowerment show of 2017 get my dates right so say bye-bye bye